Welcome to this video lecture. This is Mark Scythian, FAA licensed aerospace technician, airframe power plant and avionics certified. The date today is July 10, 2016. In this video lecture titled Understanding Propellers and Variable Blade Pitch, it will be this lecture will be a prerequisite to the turboprop engine horsepower and thrust lecture, which will be covered in the next video if you look for it in my YouTube video library. First starting out with words and terms. Uh, blade angle is defined as the helical twist of a blade or rotating airfoil for which the structural angle of the blade is higher at the blade root and lower at the blade tip. The blade angle is a permanent aerodynamic structural twist measured in degrees helical twist across the blade span independent from the propeller's blade pitch. So the blade angle might be at 45 degrees at the root and only like 3 degrees at the tip, but that's not relevant to the overall function of the propeller. It's the overall helical twist in degrees that uh, elicits a uniform amount of thrust distribution across the entire blade span because at the root of the propeller the circumference is much lower than the tip of the propeller, so the airflow at the propeller root is much lower than at the propeller tip. So the coefficient of lift based off the angle of the blade has to be twisted in order to keep the uh, relative thrust loading across the blade span as even as possible. So that is what is meant by blade angle, and it uh, has nothing to do with the propeller's blade pitch. Now as for blade pitch, that is the amount of airflow displacement a propeller will accelerate mass airflow per one revolution of the propeller measured in inches, for which blade pitch can be varied by a blade pitch control governor. And just to take a break from this uh, written lecture, of course you've seen the diagram of the turboprop engine. You have uh, a compressor stack driven by a high-speed turbine and then a second spool which takes the thermal energy that escapes and converts much of that into shaft horsepower to drive a gearbox and the propeller. So at low flight speeds the pitch of the propeller will be low. At high flight speeds the propeller pitch will be high. This allows more airflow to pass through the propeller at higher speeds so that the aircraft can go faster, but only on initial takeoff, when there is not enough air speed, the propeller will only bite into the air effectively at low pitch, but the pitch control system is there so you can go faster. And remember, based off the law of conservation of momentum, you cannot go faster than the amount of airflow you can accelerate. On an open propeller, the amount of airflow that can be accelerated is much lower than a jet even if the thrust output is similar to the jet the amount of airflow acceleration is much lower so therefore the speed of the aircraft is much lower compared to a jet jets just take amount of air and they accelerate the air faster so you can go faster in flight and just a close-up view of a variable pitch propeller on a turboprop engine. Uh, we have a picture of one right here and uh, this is set up where each blade is installed independently from the next blade into a propeller hub which contains a blade pitch change governor system which is hydraulically operated at an oil pressure so on uh, takeoff the pitch will be very low and then as the speed increases, the angle of the, I'm sorry, the pitch of the blade will increase to allow more airflow past the propeller in order for the aircraft to go faster. This is when the RPM will drop and the torque will increase, allowing this function to effectively and efficiently take place. If there is an engine failure, of course the oil pressure will go to zero and these, uh, propeller blades will flare into a 90 degree pitch rotation to minimize the amount of drag so that uh, emergency landings can be made without compromising flight speed. 
So that's just the visual to represent the written and spoken words here. As for propeller driven aircraft, flight speed, the pitch or amount of airflow displaced by the propeller is the limiting factor of how fast the airplane can fly. The law of conservation of momentum limits the maximum flight speed of any propulsion system to no faster than the speed at which it can accelerate mass, and mass airflow into thrust. Thrust alone is not enough information, but also the jet velocity or propeller discharge speed must be known in order to know how fast the air, aircraft can fly. On turboprop engines, the blades are individually attached to the blade's hub, and their blade pitch is hydraulically controlled by engine oil pressure through a blade pitch control governor. When at low speed or takeoff, the blade pitch is low, allowing the propeller blades or rotating airfoils to bite into the air, when at low flight speed, allowing them to develop maximum thrust with low propeller discharge speed. This is known as the climb propeller pitch setting. As the aircraft starts to move faster through the air, its speed will be limited by the speed at which the propeller can accelerate the oncoming air. The flight speed at the climb propeller pitch will limit the flight speed to a much lower flight speed. But when the flight speed is equal to the propeller airflow discharge speed, no higher flight speed will be possible. That is unless the blade pitch is increased by the blade pitch control governor. Only when at high enough flight speeds the blade pitch can be increased allowing more airflow to pass through the propeller blades allowing higher flight speed to occur. The RPM is decreased while the torque is increased when at maximum blade pitch allowing higher speed flight speed or higher flight speed at lower propeller RPM provided blade pitch is increased. This is when the fuel control unit of the turboprop engine trims the fuel delivery system so that the gas turbine core delivers high torque and low RPM to the high blade pitch setting permitting low RPM and high speed flight allowing peak efficiency to occur at high speed cruise flight. In other words, it's going to be low RPM, high torque, high speed flight at reduced propeller RPM using the power of a turbine engine which has both high torque and high RPM capabilities but the fuel control unit is directly linked to the blade pitch governor so that when it goes into high pitch it can also operate at low RPM and high torque allowing low RPM high speed flight. This increases the efficiency and practicality of the turboprop to practical flight speeds uh, not exceeding around 300 miles per hour. On turboprop engines, the blade pitch control governor is linked to the fuel control unit for which blade pitch and propeller RPM are inversely proportional to each other. Propellers are extremely complicated aerodynamic structures and no one formula can calculate the static and net thrust output of the many propeller makes and models, not to include the percent propel propeller efficiency or ratio between the effective thrust of the propeller divided into the shaft horsepower delivered to the propeller. The basic principle of operation of a propeller to look at it as a propulsion system similar to a jet except that the rotating airfoils or blades will cause an acceleration of mass airflow based off pitch. So it is still a propulsion system but it is limited on how much airflow it can accelerate and ultimately how much blade pitch occurs to allow the propeller to fly faster. The pitch measured in inches of the propeller is the amount of airflow the propeller can displace per every revolution of the propeller. The propeller when rotating makes up a disk area which can be calculated in square feet. This becomes a column of air accelerating mass airflow and the likes of a jet propulsion system 
but at much lower mass air acceleration compared to a jet or ducted propeller fan with tapering exhaust nozzle. An open propeller is the most efficient propulsion device below the speed of sound or more practically around 300 miles per hour. If a propeller has a specification such as 72 by 24, this refers to a propeller with 72 inches of diameter and an effective pitch of 24 inches of mass airflow displacement per one revolution of the propeller. By knowing this, an approximate thrust, uh, by knowing this, an approximate propeller thrust calculation could be made on the amount of RPM and foot-pounds torque that are involved, ultimately making up the shaft horsepower delivered to the propeller. The number of propeller blades, propeller manufacturing type, percent propeller efficiency, as well as air density, pitch, and diameter of propeller, as well as shaft horsepower delivered to propeller, all contribute to its static thrust output. When in flight or forward motion, the oncoming airflow speed, as well as propeller efficiency, also affect the net thrust output of the propeller tied to the propeller blade pitch. This is just a very basic representation of the factors involved with propellers in general and do not even begin to cover the overall details of propellers operating at both static and dynamic applications. In other words, propellers are extremely complicated aerodynamic propulsion structures and there are other more practical means to evaluate the horsepower and thrust approximations of propellers which will be covered in the next video focusing on turboprop engine horsepower and thrust. Basically, in a nutshell, a propeller's blades are rotating airfoils with helical twists designed to keep the mass airflow acceleration across the entire blade as even as possible. At the root of the blade, the circumference is much lower compared to the tip. This means less airflow passes over the root of the blade compared to the tip of the blade, hence the helical twist across the blade span higher at the root and lower at the tip. The relevant information for performance is the blade pitch because this will indicate airflow displacement in inches per every one rotation of the propeller. So after the revolutions per second are calculated by dividing the RPM into 60 seconds, then multiply times the pitch in inches divided into 12, the speed at which the airflow discharging from the propeller can be approximated. This speed of propeller discharge airflow then can be multiplied times the propeller disc area in square feet by taking the propeller diameter and dividing it into 2 for the radius, then squaring the radius and multiplying it times pi 3.14159 to know the square feet propeller disc area. The disc area of the propeller during the rotating, the disc area of the propeller during rotation times the airflow speed it discharges will equal the cubic feet per second mass airflow that is accelerated. This takes the 2D propeller disc area and makes it into a 3D cubic feet per second airflow dynamic. The cubic feet mass airflow that is accelerated is then multiplied times the air density to approximate the pounds per second mass airflow taking place at a certain propeller RPM. From that point, the approximate propeller static thrust can be determined by multiplying the pounds per second mass airflow times its final speed in feet per second derived from the propeller pitch and then divided into gravitational acceleration of 32.2 feet per second squared. It is important to also factor in efficiency losses incurred by the propeller, by the foot-pounds torque, and RPM involved to drive the propeller, multiplying them times 6.28 and dividing this quantity into 33,000 then multiplying this value times the propeller efficiency, assuming 80%. Then the above calculation times 0.8 will approximately equal the propeller static thrust involved at a specific brake horsepower, foot-pounds torque, and RPM delivered to the propeller. But this is still not an accurate 
but this is still not as accurate to know the true propeller static thrust other than experimentally testing experimentally testing the propeller and or jet thrust out of a turboprop engine on a load test cell which will measure the static thrust. Again, an easier way of calculating the horsepower and thrust of a turboprop engine will be demonstrated in the next video titled Turboprop Engine Horsepower and Thrust. Remember that thrust is a force and horsepower is a power. The two have no direct relationship to each other but are indirectly related to each other in regards to mass and motion. The key word is motion. During static thrust output only mass air flows in motion as propeller discharge airflow and power can be indirectly translated into static thrust in reference to the speed and mass of the airflow that is accelerated. But when the aircraft and engine are in forward motion, now the vehicle weight, acceleration, and speed are translated into power in the form of dynamic thrust or net thrust ultimately becoming thrust horsepower. This video was designed to familiarize the audience on the many parameters taking place when power is initially used to harness thrust from an open propeller as opposed to jet propulsion from a jet or ducted propeller fan exhibiting the properties of a jet. This concludes this video lecture on the basics of understanding propellers and variable blade pitch. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.